Hello, this video covers section 11.1 .1 from your textbook and as you can see it's titled The Review of Functions. As you know, we the very first day of class we talked about functions, what they were. We're going to be reviewing some of the terminology, how we determine what a function is, how we evaluate functions, how we interpret graphs of functions. And so just to start out with class today, I want to go over the definition. If you will remember a function is a rule for which each input value is assigned one and only one output value. And since we have this mention of input values and output values, one of the things we talk about next is the set of all input values or the set of all output values. Um, and we give those a special name. You might remember what they are. If we're talking about all possible input values, values that we can put into a function, what do we call that? We call that the domain of a function. And then likewise the set of all output values for a function is called the what? The range of a function. And functions can be represented in different ways. One of the first ways that we see functions represented is as an algebraic rule. Like this function takes each input value x, first multiplies it by 1 half, and then after multiplying by 1 half, we add 3 to that value. That is an example of a type of function. Also, though, functions can be represented by graphs like we see here in, at the right. We have a graph of a line that can represent a function. We also saw back in chapter 3 that a table can represent a function where maybe the first column might be like our inputs or our x's and the, the age column might be our output. our y values or another terminology for y is f of x. y and f of x are the same thing. So um, and then we also have could give functions examples of functions as ordered pairs. So here we have four different ordered pairs and this represents a function. Now Going back here to this table, we can see that this actually does represent a function too by definition because by definition, let's say a function is a rule for which each input has one and only one output. So here you see Bruce has one only one output, 61. Patty input has only one age output, 57. Clarence is only 68. Steve is only 61. Susie is only 53. It wouldn't be a function if we said Steve was both 61 years old and 65 years old at the same time, which of course we know is absurd. That's not possible. Same thing here. We have an input of 1 going to 2. We have 2 going to 4. We have 3 going to 3. We have 4 going to 2. So if these are all examples of functions, I guess the begs the question, what are some examples of things that are not functions? And here in the table we see one example of something that's not a function where we maybe have one input that has two different outputs. Can you see which birthday is the problem in this table? Which birthday date has two different output values? Well hopefully you notice that it's April 19th because on April 19th that's the birthday has an output of father and of daughter that's different they're different output values so we have the same input value that has two different output put values that makes this not a function so see if you can come up with on your own maybe a point here that would make this particular set of points not a function one that I might pick might say maybe three and four because we already know that 3 goes to 2. So if 3 goes to 2 and 3 also goes to 4, that makes this not a function. 
Okay, one of the other ways we saw to represent functions was with graphs. How do we tell if a graph represents a function? Well, we use what's called the vertical line test. We can use the vertical line test to see whether an input goes to more than one output. And what the vertical line test says is that if you pass a vertical line through a graph, you just pass it through the graph, does it ever cross the graph in more than one place? And so I'm going to draw on this graph an example of a vertical line here drawing it in green and you can see from that graph that in this particular place that I drew it how many places does that cross the graph it only crosses it one place it crosses it right there is there any place that I can put this vertical line like up here or right here is there any place where it's going to cross the graph more than once I don't think so it only crosses once that's the it passes the vertical line test so we would say that that yes this is a function. Now let's take a look at the next one. If we will this pass the vertical line test and we should see here that it does not pass the vertical line test. For example, if I draw this particular line, when the input is x equals 2, the output has two different values. It has an output of y equals 2, but it also has an output of y equals negative 2. So that makes it not a function because you can't have one input having two different outputs. And so when I'm talking about outputs, of course, I'm talking about y values. So that point right there corresponds to y equals 2, and this point right here corresponds to x, y equals negative 2. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and talk about function notation. Remember a function is a rule that assigns exactly one output or range value, remember range is output, to each domain or each x value. If you have a rule, then there's different parts to it. Remember first of all that y that's like our f of x so when I see f of x on the left hand side of the equation we're gonna think about that as y but we never we never actually write this stuff over here when we write a function I just put this here so we can remember that that y is f of x now the way the functions normally look is this part that's boxed right here functions normally look like this and it's not always named f of x it could be something like g of x or h of x or any variable really it could even be something like we saw in the last chapter where height was a function of time these are all examples of functions and the variable that's inside the parentheses that's our independent variable that's where we put the input the x value or in this case a t value and then the right hand side of the equation is where we define the function that's what we tell is going on to the input that's what if you will the formula for the function and in this particular example it says to take our input value multiply it by 9 and then add 3 so if we have a function we could talk about evaluating it um, for example if I wanted to find f of 7 in this example that means our x value is 7 so we take 7 and we plug it in for x and remember it's a good idea whenever you plug in a value to put parentheses around it so this one in particular is going to look like 5 times 7 plus 3 which is of course 35 plus 3 which is 38 okay we could also do evaluate a quadratic equation remembering to plug in when we, whenever we plug in a value we put parentheses around it so this is going to be two times parentheses negative two squared plus three times parentheses negative two minus one and we could simplify that this is two times four minus six minus 1 or 8 minus 6 minus 1 which is equal to 1 
So we just found out that g of negative 2 is equal to 1. This one we found out that f of 7 was equal to 38. Um, so again, we could do something like finding f of negative 8. I'm actually going to skip that one, and I'm going to do f of 2a plus 3. What if our input is more than just a number? The last two we had numbers here. We had a 7 and we had a negative 2. Does it change the process if this is more than just a number or do we still just plug it in? And the answer is that we still just plug everything in and of course when we plug in we put parentheses. So the first part of this is that we have something squared. That's what this rule is. The rule says we take our input and we square it. So in this case, the input is 2a plus 3. And then we take negative 5 times, again, parentheses, where our input goes in, another 2a plus 3. And then lastly, we still have our minus 9. We're just following the rule that the function defines. And then we can continue on, remembering that 2a plus 3 squared means 2a plus 3 times 2a plus 3. And we still have the minus 5 times 2a plus 3. We have minus 9. And now we can definitely do some simplifying. We have 4a squared plus 6a plus 6a plus 9 minus 10a minus 15 minus 9 and now we can combine like terms we only have the 4a squared term but then we have a 6a a 6a which makes 12a and then we can subtract 10 away from that so that makes a plus 2a. Then we have a plus 9, a minus 9, and a minus 15. That makes minus 15. So that's the example here. Now I want to go over what different function notations mean. Remember, if we have something like this, this is function notation, and, and the value here is our independent variable. This is our x, and then the whole thing, the h of x, remember that's like our y, so this is saying that y is equal to negative 2. It's saying when x equals 5, y equals negative 2. So this actually corresponds to a point. It says that x is 5, y is negative 2. This next one, g of negative 11 equals 4. Notice it's a new function name. It's not called h anymore. It's called g, but still it's saying that when x is negative 11, y is 4, which corresponds to the point negative 11, 4. Again, we have another function named f here, but again, this corresponds to the x value of negative 1 half giving a y value output of 0. So you go ahead and try to write this next one real quick. I'll give you about 5-10 seconds to write that. Okay, You should have written down that the input, the x value is 1.7, the y value is 5.4. Hopefully that's easy enough. So this brings us to our last um, part of the section, and that's another thing that's review here. How do we interpret graphs? So you recall that the domain is the set of what? The set of x's or the set of y's? It's the set of x's. So, and we've done this before. Here we have an absolute value equation. Remember that absolute values represent or I mean absolute, the graphs of absolute value equations or functions look like um, V's and this particular absolute value has been shifted up one so the equation of this you remember what that would look like 
it's the absolute value of x plus 1 for a shift up 1. Well, any x value can be plugged in here because this graph keeps on going to the right and it keeps on going to the left. So it's going to end up covering all the x's out here and all the x's out to the left. So I would say the domain is negative infinity to infinity. There's no restrictions on the x values. Take a look at this function over here. I could plug any x in there and take its absolute value and then add 1 to it. The range, however, there are restrictions. In fact, this absolute value will always be positive. If we add 1 to an always positive number, the lowest number we can ever go to is 1. And you can see that in the graph. The y values, that's the, the horizontal values here, the y values never go below 1. And so we would say the range is what? It's everything from 1 to infinity. You thought you could forget about this earlier in the semester, but we can't forget about domain and range. We're going to come back to it here. And of course we put a bracket on the 1 because we're including 1. That's the vertex point there. Are there any x-intercepts here? Does it ever cross the x-axis? The answer there is there's no x-intercepts. What about the y-intercepts? There, are there any y-intercepts? Well, yeah, there's one place where it crosses the y-axis. That's the vertex. The y-intercept is the point 0, 1. Okay, so now we get back to this notation thing. This notation says find the y-value when x equals what? When x equals negative 3. So come over here. Here's our x values. Negative 3 is right there. Let's see what point that corresponds to on the graph. Negative 3 corresponds, that's x, right? x is negative 3. x equals negative 3 corresponds to this point, which corresponds to y equals 4. So we would say that f of negative 3 is equal to Four, which remember that's the point negative three four so the next problem says find the a's or the x's such that f of a is equal to five well look over here where is f of a that's saying this right here is saying remember y is equal to five well y is equal to five right here which corresponds to that point but it also corresponds to that point, which is an x value of negative 4 and an x value of positive 4. So I want x values, or they're using the terminology a values. a equal to negative 4 gives 5, and a equal to positive 4 gives 5 as an output. That is because this point is the point 4, 5, and this is the point negative 4, 5. Alright, so that does it for section 11.1. .1. Make sure you do your self-check, and we'll see you in class. Thank you.